got a bit of an interesting day here today. It's all around a good day, but it's definitely, it's got some undertones. <laughs> For that reason, I'm adding a little more creamer to this. You know, sometimes you just need a little sweet treat. Ooh, ooh, that's gonna hit. Mm -hmm. I'm also gonna make a little breakfast. I'm leaving the house in like an hour and 20 minutes. So I wanna eat really fast and then I gotta get a little bit of work done. Cottage cheese. I'm gonna chop a couple of hard boiled eggs. And then we're just gonna take a quarter of this avocado. Normally I would do red onion, but I don't feel like chopping that right now. And I do have green onion, so I'm gonna chop up a little bit of this. And then we're gonna add our chili onion crunch. This is essential, actually. And here's our breakfast, kind of like egg salad, with cottage cheese, extra protein. So yummy, I love it. Okay, we're gonna eat some breakfast. I try on most days to eat breakfast before I have my coffee or like before I finish my coffee. It's just better for you, so I've been trying to do that. I'm definitely not doing that every day. Some days I go straight for the coffee. So it goes. So we got stuff today because I'm not sure the plans for the day really. And I got to, I got to do a little bit of editing here before I leave the house. So I'm going to dive in. We'll talk about some stuff a little bit later. I might have a hard time doing so, but we're going to try it guys. Welcome to the vlog. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. We're heading out on day one really of a journey. All in all, it's the day that leads everyone in the right direction. So it's good, it's overall good. I got my bag with my laptop and my book. I'm gonna be spending the day at my parents' house. My wallet just in case. I'm going with my parents for my mom's first radiation appointment. Road to recovery. Road to recovery. Hello, hello. Hey, Tara. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Great, how you doing? <laughs> Doing just great. What the heck? How you doing, little buddy? Oh, 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 Can I have kisses? Give mama kisses. Can I give mama kisses? Are you afraid of me? Do you, do you smell the radiation or something? <laughs> Jesus, what does it take to get a kiss out of my dog? What does it take? Oh, Brady. Hey, Brady. Brady? <laughs> hey. She sees us all eating, having some uh, veg and some coconut rice. I'm just having some hummus carbs. and some dip. <laughs> we love carbs. No, I do. You deserve to have everything your heart desires. Well, I can still swallow. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I agree with that. You should eat it all. <laughs> Brady's like, but I should too. Oh, that's a lucky girl. Whoa. Hi, Papa Crew. Look at your face. Why are you so cute? <laughs> can you tell we're obsessed with our dog? You know, I'm over here having my little post lunch dessert. After all the jalapeno chips I just ate, they have crumble cookies. Whoa, they're almost done. You guys have made a really good dent on the cookie box. Okay. Yeah. Because there was a lot of stuff in here. No I kind of want to try it, the tiniest bit of the shortbread cake. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. It's delicious. Really? It's not as sweet. I'm just taking a tiny little sliver off. Mmm. It's very moist. Right? That's a really soft, yummy cake. I know. I'm impressed by them. Same. They're expanding their horizons. Like the cookies are good, but I find them too sweet. And lately I'm just not into like the overly sweet. Which is shocking to hear, mom. You're I know. the sweet girl. I know. Looks like they didn't like the s'mores cookie. This is the last one remaining. I'm confused by it. I, I feel really, like it just- I actually didn't really eat any, hardly any. I had a little taste of everything. This is all dad's work. Dad, Jared. Nice. I'm gonna try a little bit of the, the s'mores guy. I've had a couple little bites and it just tastes like chocolate chips, but I've been avoiding like the marshmallow so. Or you don't like marshmallows? I know I do. I just I just didn't want to take the, mm. the best the best part of the cookie. I just took a tiny little bit for a little taste test. I mean, it's not bad. It's very good. But I like the chocolate chip the best. I think it's a simple classic. Best chocolate chip cookie of all time. Thank you. Mm. <coughs> I'm okay, Brady. She's looking at you like, Mama, you okay? She doesn't like it when I cry. Mom, she knows. I'm going to go read my book. Lay out in the sun, get a nice hour of sun on the skin. Feeling a little too pale in the face for July. Gotta bump it up. Yeah, you still have to be careful in the sun. 
Oh, really? Forever, for the rest of my life. Really? My chest. Can I see the tattoos? I don't know if you can see. Oh, um, I can see it, yeah. And then there's one here. Oh, yeah, I see it. And then there's one. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Did it hurt to get the tattoos? Eh, just this one hurt a little bit on the yeah. side. You're tatted, mom. Oh yeah, I'm all tatted. Spicy. Mm, just what I've always wanted. I know. I'm time to go outside and read. Yes. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. <laughs> Gotta let everyone know. Oh, the water looks so nice. Are we ready to swim? Of course. Ready, you want to go swimming with me today? No. Do you want to go swimming no. with me? Yes. No. Oh, you were so cute when you squinted this on. We should get you some sunglasses. <gasps> <laughs> Not into it. <laughs> Look here, braids. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah, you're a good girl. You're a good girl. All right, I'm 41% into my book. Pretty good. Setting up my makeshift tanning bed. Here we go. Book. Sunscreen. Hey, Brady. You know what? You're very soft. Can I have a paw? Can I have another paw? Other paw. We were in the pool for a while, Mom and I, reading our books. Pure peace. Pure peace. Yeah. That's One, what the summer's all about, right? Yeah, that's what you hope. Wonderful way to spend an afternoon, but I have to get home and get some work done, so I'm gonna head out soon, but we're drying off for a bit. Hanging out with the puppy. Do you wanna come in the car? <laughs> Does that mean yes? <laughs> okay, okay, we go soon. Come on in. Yes. Special little ride home. The girls are on their way. And there you go. All right. Home we go. It is just past five o'clock. We're home. We're having a little pineapple bubbly and we're gonna have a little chat. Now, this is not a chat I ever thought that I would sit down and have and I honestly, didn't plan to have until I spoke to my mom about it yesterday and she brought up talking about this online. Originally, I didn't think that I would because it's not my thing, it's not my thing to talk about, but she thought it was a good idea to talk about for many reasons that we'll get into. This is um, a very, very, very vulnerable thing for me to talk about online and it's very sensitive to me and to my family and it's been something we've been dealing with for months now. It's hard enough for me to talk about to people in my life and to sit down and talk about this online with people is going to be difficult. And when I'm uncomfortable, I smile. So know that none of this makes me happy to talk about. Um, but after talking to my mom about it, there's reasons that I would also like to talk about it online, but I would never in a million years sit down and do this if my mom wasn't 100,000% okay with it. I also told her that obviously, like I'm gonna send this to her and make sure she's okay with everything that I've said. And if she doesn't like what I've said or changes her mind about me wanting to put this out there, then this is getting scrapped. And it's 100% up to her because this is her situation and we're all, you know, just on the outside. But obviously this is my mom. Um, so it's a bit sensitive. To give you some backstory on where we are right now. My mom's had a cough, a pretty bad cough for over a year, maybe even two years. And she had got it checked out by many doctors. They said it was just her asthma because she's had asthma pretty much her whole life or it was just like a long cough. It was nothing, it was nothing to worry about. So we just all carried on and kind of ignored the cough. But then in April, when we went on our family trip to Arizona, that's when things really changed. And I've never seen my mom so low and my mom was sure that there was something wrong and we were all obviously trying to be encouraging like no you're okay like it's the altitude because she wasn't able to do the hikes to the way that she would normally be able to do that my mom has been in amazing shape her entire life she's worked out forever and she really struggled she was really frustrated because she didn't know what was going on in her body but she knew something was wrong and that's one of the reasons why she thought it was a good idea for me to talk about this because she wants people to advocate for themselves and for their bodies and she was like I knew in my body something was not right and I needed to push to make sure that somebody saw me and heard me and listened. Otherwise we wouldn't be here right now. So when we got back from that trip, they were pushing to find a doctor that would see her and do proper tests. And so she ended up going to a respirologist and they sent her on a ton of tests. Started off with just like a chest X-ray and then there was an MRI and there was a CT scan and there was a biopsy and then another MRI and then another CT scan. At first, you know, I think my mom was trying to be really reassuring and my, both my parents were and they were telling me and my brother like, it's gonna be fine, it's probably nothing, it's it's 
it's gonna be fine. Never in my life did I think that this would happen to my family. You know, it's one of those things like you just don't think it's gonna happen to you and then it does and it's a big reality check. <laughs> Halfway through the testing, I think it was around the time she got her biopsy and we had Mother's Day brunch and it was just, everyone was feeling very, very low and I could not process the concept of my mom being sick. Like I was like, this is my mom, like <laughs> she's not sick. My mom's my mom. My mom takes care of me when I'm sick and I'm not gonna cry. But then reality started setting in and I started getting scared, but not really knowing how to process being scared because I still want to be positive and be like, well, no, it's going to be fine. And as far as I knew, we didn't know anything was going to be wrong. They found a mass in her chest and the doctors had originally told her it's most likely not cancer. Like it's probably not cancerous. So I got that information from my parents and I was like, okay, like mom's, my mom doesn't have cancer. And then they got more tests and more results and then it was most likely it is cancer and we found that out the day that my mom and i went to wicked and i don't want to say this because i know my mom's gonna watch this <laughs> sitting watching wicked with her and i was like i don't know i'm not gonna say what was <laughs> going through my head because it's terrible and at the time we didn't really know we didn't know anything and i think the unknown was the scariest part because i am somebody that overthinks things and my brain went everywhere. It went everywhere it could be when you hear your mom probably has cancer. Um, I feel bad for my mom watching this because I know she's gonna cry. <laughs> but that's when I started getting really stressed and I remember landing in Mexico for Jill's bachelorette and I went right to the bar because I was at baggage claim just crying. I really wanted to hold it together in front of my mom, in front of my parents. And so I feel like I landed in Mexico and I was like finally in a space where I could just cry. But then I was like, I can't, like this is my time to support Jill and, turn on that side and I had to shut it out. And obviously I, you know, I do this for a living and you gotta shut it out. And <sighs> anyways, when we went to Montreal for our family trip, she sat me down. She said that the results had come in and it was in fact cancer, a very rare form of cancer. They didn't even know exactly what it is, but thankfully it's just located in the tumor in her chest, which is gonna be removed but she has to do five weeks of radiation to kill the cancer cells around it and prevent it from spreading or getting bigger. And then she has to do surgery to remove it. And obviously I'm very close with my family. So having something like this happen, it's just, I don't even wanna say a reality check because I've always really appreciated my family and I don't take them for granted, but it's a reminder that things can change in a second. Like you have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow and to not take advantage of your loved ones and the time that you think you have with them when you have no idea like before we knew the plan of action i was like i have no idea what's gonna happen here i have no idea i i don't even want to say the horrible thoughts i had in my head because they're horrible and they're not real and it's gonna be okay but that's why i wanted to talk about this because i'm gonna use this as a reminder for everybody that it could happen to anyone. I put a lot of importance in my life around my family. I feel very lucky to have a very close knit family. It's really hard to watch your mom, your like you know, your, your closest people in your life go through something like this. A huge part of my anxiety was feeling how she must have been feeling and how my dad feels because like that's my dad's whole world. <laughs> this is his wife <laughs> and my mom is you know it's her life and I think about how she must think that her kids are thinking about this and you don't ever want to, have to tell your kids like you have cancer and obviously you know things could be so much worse and we're so, we're so lucky that it's not it's not worse obviously you never want to hear that you have cancer or someone you love has cancer but in the grand scheme of things we're very lucky we have access to great doctors great hospitals you know we're in a very good situation out of a very bad situation and well it's been very hard for me to process because I don't, I don't know how to process my mom being sick. Like I just, I, I don't see it. You know, my mom is, my mom's a wonderful woman. She always has been, everyone loves her. There's nothing not to love but my mom, but I'm sorry, mom, <laughs> for what I'm gonna say. I've just never seen someone so strong. You know? <laughs> like just her optimism and her just like, she's so chill and so positive and so, at peace with all of it. Like there's a lot of people that would take 
you know, results like this in such a different direction and, and be such a different person after hearing that you're gonna have to go through all of this. But my mom is just like, she's gonna be fine. And she's just like doing her thing. It's been incredibly impressive to watch her through this. She's actually partaking in a study on this type of cancer and participating in this so she can help other people if they're diagnosed with something similar. It's very impressive, like going to the hospital today and she's just chill. She's just like ready to do it and get it done. I don't think I, <sighs> stepping foot into the hospital today, like it's a, it's a cancer hospital, made it a little more real. Um, my mom's a, she's a champ. <laughs> she's a fucking champ. She came out of her little radiation appointment all like, Prep and proper. She's like, it's done. Let's go. And I was just like, <sighs> anyways, it would be really cool if you guys could send really positive vibes <laughs> to my mom and my family. Um, positive vibes, or if you pray, whatever you believe in, um, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> I know my mom would really appreciate it. And my mom has five weeks of radiation appointments, five times a week. And then shortly after, she's gonna have surgery to remove it. And my dad said, we're gonna have a party. It's gonna be a going away party for the tumor, pre-surgery. He's already prepping things now. And we're just trying to do what we can, keep the vibes high. So it was nice to spend some time with them today after her appointment. It's really weird for me to even sit down and talk about this because it doesn't really feel real to me. Like I spent a lot of time crying about it, but it's not, it's really hard for me to process because I just never thought that this would happen. I've been very fortunate in my life to not have anyone that I'm close to have real health issues. So it's just, it's just really weird. I'm honestly kind of scared to talk about this because it's very vulnerable and very sensitive, but this is what's going on over here. But it's all gonna be good. Everyone's gonna be well and healthy. And I think going through things like this really brings people closer together and shows you what's truly important in life. And um, I'm grateful that we all have each other. So that's what's going on. And I'm pretty sweaty and disgusting. So I'm gonna get into a nice warm shower and I gotta get some work done. And then I wanna paint a little bit and enjoy the evening. So we're gonna go shower. We're gonna pick the vibes back up because that's what we do best. I am the vibe girl. When someone's having a bad day, they know they come to me. I will bring the vibes. I'll always bring the vibes. When someone tells me they need a little boost, I know what to do. I try my best at the very least. Anyways, this is what's been going on over here. There's been a lot, there's a little lot going on this year. Every day is a day. Okay, we're bringing the vibes back up. Here's tonight's dinner. Just made a cauliflower gnocchi curry with veggies. It's gonna be delicious. I've made this for years. Always with my Trader Joe's curry sauce. It's like the red Thai curry sauce. Freaking bomb. And then I put in some of my veggies I made the other day, added some spinach, some edamame. And here we have it. I've just been working here since my shower. But then I decided at like 7.30, it's time to stop make some food. And as always, I'm bringing this to the couch. We're watching something on TV. I'm gonna start Queen Charlotte. Let's just try this. I'm gonna go down there and then when I'm done eating, we're going outside to paint. Mm-hmm. Immediately, yes. Immediately. It always comes up different because I don't, you know, measure. And this is a really good one. Mm-hmm. Much saucier than it looks. And I love that for me. Okay the couch. I will see you when it's painting time. Dinner was delish. I just finished the first episode of Queen Charlotte. I think I'm gonna love this show, but it's now 20 minutes to nine. Sun is setting at nine and I need like at least an hour of painting. So I think I'm just gonna hold and we're gonna paint another day. Instead, I'm gonna do something productive that I should do instead of painting, which is editing tomorrow's vlog. So I'm going to just dive in here until like 10 o'clock and then crawl myself up to bed. I have an hour and a half left of my book club book. So got to finish that for tomorrow. Go to sleep at like 1130 midnight. And that's my plan. Painting will have to be another day. And into the editing. It 
it is 10 p.m. Shutting it down. That was for sure the best use of my time. I feel very good about that. Gonna plug my laptop in. Feeling better for tomorrow and the work that I have to do in the morning. Now I gotta get into bed and read my book. Got to 66% into the book by the pool today. It's so good. Anyways, guys, I'm going to leave you here, I think. It's a pretty big day over here. All heading in the right direction, though. You know, starting this process means we are one day closer, one step closer to health. <laughs> I have a lot of confidence that everything's gonna work out and everything's gonna be okay, and I feel very, very grateful for that fact. I know that this situation looks different for everyone that experiences it, and feel very grateful that there's a process, there's a treatment plan, and a lot of faith that everything's gonna be okay. But I also wanna say that I hope that people can take this as a reminder that you really don't know what's going on in people's lives unless you genuinely know them face to face. And even if you do, you still don't always know what's going on. It took me a long time to talk to a lot of my friends about this because I didn't know how. And sometimes the people in your life might not know how to share things that they're going through. So sometimes you just gotta be there and just be the best person you can be to your friends and your family. Because you really never know. You never know what's going on in somebody's life. And it's just really important to be mindful of that. Especially with people that you watch online that you don't necessarily know in real life. I think it's even more important to be mindful of the fact that, you know, there's so much more behind the scenes that anyone could ever share in a YouTube video. So that's my that's my stuff for today. <laughs> I know it's not the most upbeat, positive vlog, <laughs> but this is reality, this is life, and this is what we're going through right now. But I'm gonna end this vlog here. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next vlog.